So Mark, you're joining us after your third Norwich City AGM. What was the mood amongst the shareholders this evening? First of all, Dan, I can't believe it's my third one. Uh, in some sense, it felt like the first one because it was the first time I really was going to answer a lot of questions and really had, the, I guess, the final say. Uh, the mood was really good. Uh, I thank the fans and supporters, really the shareholders, for almost 99% support for this. I'm, I don't think in the world 99% of people agree on anything anymore, <laughs> but they do here, which is really uh, special and I think a, a testament to how Delia and Michael have managed this process, which really they, they put in from the first time you know uh, I met with them. I think they were assessing whether I could be a uh, long-term solution to, or you know option to take over the, the club from them. And uh, yeah, so that, that was great. And I think the tone was as positive as, as it's been in, for any of the three AGMs I've been at. You mentioned they're notable by their absence for the first time at an AGM, Delia and Michael, having stepped down from the board. What would you like to say about their stewardship of the club? Well, we just talked about how nobody, you, know, you don't have 99% of people agreeing on anything. The, the world is constantly changing, and yet for 28 years they've been a constant. Uh, and love for the community, love for the club. Still go to, you know, matches away, which it is really something. And, uh, you know, I hope I can bring that level of passion and commitment to, uh, to the club. I am a competitive person, so I know I'll measure up in terms of being as competitive as, as they are, but I hope I can, you know, match their passion and commitment. As you mentioned there again, 99% or so support for Norfolk Holdings and the takeover of Norwich City Football Club. Can you tell us what that means for the financial position of the club? Well, I think, you know, it was somewhat symbiotic where the way we structured this, you know, starting with Delia and Michael not taking any money out and us converting all of the loans to equity and writing off a lot of accrued interest, you know, it really put the club on a very stable footing. And, and so I think, and, and a vision for the future, we, had something special here. You, you see in sports a little bit when somebody uh, buys something with a path to control. We didn't, we didn't have that, but if you know that you, in a few years you'll be taking over, you can start moving things in a direction. Here, uh, with Delia and Michael, we just try to do everything you know, the right way. When they first really raised with me the issue of you know, being the next steward for Norwich, it was uh, not this August, it was it August a year ago, so it was uh, 15 months ago. And I really wasn't ready yet. I, you know, I'd spent the first year while I was on the board mostly as a fan. And so I, I didn't really, uh, I didn't really have a sense of whether I could do it. And it's an enormous responsibility to steward a team that's, you know, passion for the community, it's 120 years old. You know, the Brewers are about half that age. And so that's a, that's a, a century plus. You, there's a lot of responsibility. The player trading, the player contracts that you discussed, always a hot topic in the AGM and for sports fans everywhere, for, for football fans. Your relationship with Ben and obviously a, a January transfer window approaching, how much are conversations turning to that at the moment? Well, as we get closer, they, they pick up. You know, the bad news is we have 10 injuries. The good news is almost every one of those players will be back by that transfer window. In fact, I think they're all expected to be back. So the best players we'll be adding in the transfer window are our own players. You know, that, that said, uh, if you look forward a year, you can guesstimate where the team may have additional needs. And so Ben is looking to see if he can find players who can fit you know, can help now, but fit future needs and fit his framework of, uh, you know, a, a younger player who you can have mid to long term value in. So you very unlikely will see a, uh, a band aid, you know, a, a high priced loan uh, player who'd be here for, you know, a few months and then whether we succeeded or not would leave. I mean, I, he, he will look at everything. That's his discipline. And, you know, having said this now, if someone comes across, he wants to recommend it, we'll support it. Uh, 
but the, the, that window, I've been through a few of these transfer windows now. Uh, as we know, it's the January window is hard to free players up because all you know, if, if a team has a few good players, they're probably a pretty good team in competing, and then they don't want to let them go. So you really have to look at often players who are at you know lower level teams or players who aren't assigned to a team, and and then there's a little bit of a leap of faith. It's been a period of change at Norwich City, a new head coach, Delia and Michael stepping down from the board. You're going to be joined by long-term friend Richard Ressler uh, on the board as well. What can you tell us about Richard and have you made any strides about the additional board uh, placement that you're entitled to? So Richard and I have been friends for decades, probably don't want to date myself too much. Very, very close friends. and. Uh, you know, we have different skill sets. We both are uh, successful investors, but I've been in more of the corporate arena and he's been in the real estate area. You know, uh, we both manage, uh, which is going to sound like bragging, but it's just numbers. Uh, we both manage tens of billions of dollars. Uh, and so when it comes to real estate, you know, he's the expert. And I don't know that I'm the, he's a clear expert. I wouldn't say I'm an expert in sports, but I do have 20 years of experience. <laughs> We've done pretty well. Uh, and so he has some very definitive ideas on how we can develop the, this uh, Carroll Road and the area around it. Um, eminently trustworthy. And what, what, if there's one surprise I've had, he is so passionate about this. Had he, you know, he had a conflict with a, one of his firm uh, uh, important meetings today. May have been a conference of some sort, but He's, he's as passionate as, as I am about the team. Uh, and and uh, by the way, I'll say for Richard, uh, you know, when Board of Science first played for us, we, you know, was this very active player running down one wing. I have a text from him from, you know, whenever that was, two years ago, or I really like this Board of Science. <laughs> so if, you know, if the real estate uh, gets completed, then maybe he can go uh, join Ben's scouting department. What do you think English sport can learn from American sport by way of the fan experience? And what do you love? What have you loved about your 20 years in the sporting world? So, you know, whether sports globally is a big business, whether it's professional leagues around the world, whether it's, you know, F1 racing. Um, and so I think a lot of the things you need to run a major sports, and this is a major sports franchise. It's been in the Premier League, it's a, over a century of tradition. It's Premier League uh, back and forth for many numbers of years. I had a fan tonight tell me about a, uh, you, you saw a game where we beat Arsenal, and I thought I heard him say, is a little loud in the room, 1984, no, 1954. <laughs> so he was describing in great detail winning goal against Arsenal then. So there's, you know, the, and, the, and the, the impact that this club can bring is well beyond Norwich City and, and in, in areas that, you know, the board today, we looked at the impact of the mental health videos that we've been doing. Uh, I know this is my interview, but you want, you want to guess how many page views views there have been of the mental health video we did last year about the two fans sitting in the stadium? You may know the answer. You're going to put me under pressure because I should know the answer. I think it's gone past 300 million in total. Good and wow. <laughs> 350 million. Can you imagine? 350 million. And, and so Sam was saying that he was in, uh, in India and somebody in, in his, you know, uh, you know, one of his chat rooms said that they had all watched the video. And, and so, you know, we can have an impact globally. And, um, and so, you know, there, there's a, there's a skill set to running a sports organization. You know, the, this club has over 40 players who are like circled as first team possibles. It has an academy. Um, we have the same thing in, in baseball. I think that there's a lot that's been written about, uh, uh, you know, sort of the Americanization of, of the stadium experience. There were questions on that tonight, and I mentioned listening to Canary Call. There are, there are supporters who want to see more of an American influence on the environs here. That, 
uh, surprise me because one, one of the things I want to be careful to do is to, you know, cherish the culture we have here and not not change it. But where we can bring some more, you know, big time sports to, you know, Norwich, we'll look to do that. And that involves the development of the stadium. If you were to, so Milwaukee is the smallest city uh, of 30 major league teams. Uh, we have one of the best stadiums, you know, and, and that's why we, you know, can do what we can do. So we can do things here to uh, create an even better fan experience and drive revenues. And the more revenues we have, the more we can, you know, build our club.